next item on this afternoon's agenda is item number 10, which is ordinance number 2012-234, which would amend and reordain the city code uh, for the purpose of defining and regulating by conditional use permit nightclub uses in certain zoning districts. Uh, and Mr. Roy Bimbo will be presenting this item to you this afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I'm going to wait for our PowerPoint to come up here for a second. <clears throat> Need a roll, it's not here. Let me left with it. Just go ahead and uh, you click. We need to work this out together. Uh, in the way of background, this uh, issue came before you uh, some years ago. And you recommended in favor of the uh, ordinance that I'm going to discuss here. Uh, it has now been introduced uh, by City Council and is coming back to you for a public hearing. Uh, currently, the ordinance does not distinguish between nightclub uses and restaurants. Um, under the ordinance, as, as it currently exists, establishments that serve alcohol and have late night entertainment are considered restaurants. Um, this is not typical of a lot of ordinances, certainly that I've looked at, where they do, in fact, distinguish between nightclubs and restaurant uses. The uh, zoning office does consider this to be a significant problem. Uh, <coughs> establishments having features generally considered characteristic of a nightclub have been permitted in close proximity of residential neighborhoods. One of the situations we have in the city is. We have mixed use districts, first of all. We've had it for more than 35 years where you actually have residential uses that are permitted within the commercial districts. We also have residential districts, by virtue of us being an older city, that are in close proximity to commercial districts. So you, you have this intermingling of, of commercial and residential uses. Uh, the other issue that, that has come to our attention is that in areas where uh, restaurants are permitted, uh, certain entertainment districts, uh, you have a congregation of these nightclub uses in close proximity to one another, which has some attendant uh, enforcement uh, problems with it. Uh, community concern has been expressed regarding the disruptive levels of late night noise, activity, uh, parking, traffic conditions associated with certain of these uses, especially those that are in close proximity to residential neighborhoods. Uh, the proposed ordinance creates a definition for nightclubs and identifies which districts and under what circumstances these uses are permitted. Uh, for it to be a nightclub, it has to meet all of these three features that I've mentioned. The, uh, and it has to exist between the hours of 12 midnight and 6 a.m. And you may ask, well, why 6 a.m.? What happens is that, as, as we're all aware, ABC requirements uh, govern up until 2 a.m. in the morning. After that, what happens in some of these instances is these uh, some establishments become private clubs and they stay open later so we wanted to make certain that the ordinance would adapt to was adapted to those kinds of situations so uh, that's why you see from 12 midnight to uh, 6 a.m. Uh, the three conditions are the alcohol beverages are served or consumed on the premises floor area are pro provided for dancing and or standing space for patrons in conjunction with an entertainment activity and there is music or other amplified sound for the purposes of entertainment of patrons. Um, the nightclub definition specifically exempts background music and solely as coming with dining and sound associated with television or similar media being viewed by patrons. Uh, the nightclub uh, definition also exempts private events not open to general public such as a wedding reception, uh, banquet, nonprofit event, or similar use. Here's the, I'm not going to read these, but here's a listing of the districts in which the nightclub would be a conditional use. This is what's being proposed by the ordinance. Um, you'll note down there at the bottom, the M2 heavy draft line of a note subject to say report. Actually, it would not be a conditional use in that instance in the M2 district because the M2 district set up where the uh, CAO makes a recommendation to city council and then city council considers that recommendation. So in the M2 district, it actually would be a recommendation from the CAO's office. 
Uh, each condition is permitted subject to a public hearing for planning commission, city council, city council. The, one of the uh, major advantages of the conditions permit process is city council can attach specific conditions to any conditions permit, which lets them look at them on a case by case basis and determine in, in certain instances based on proximity to other uh, similar uses or proximity to residential districts if there are in fact additional conditions that ought to be applied to a specific use. Um, it, this is important. If adopted, the proposed ordinance will apply to newly created nightclubs only. Existing nightclubs are not required to make application for a condition use permit, nor such uses considered by law under the zoning ordinance non-conforming by virtue of their classification of conditional use. <coughs> I mean, uh, the staff uh, recommends approval of the proposed ordinance. All right. Are there questions of Mr. Bill? I have, um, it's probably more of a procedural one, but let's just say that an existing nightclub shuts down for whatever reason, voluntarily or involuntarily. And so when it goes to reopen, would it be subject to getting a new additional use? Depends on how long it shuts down. If it shuts down for more than two years, it would be. Two years. So it can shut down for up to two years and it's not covered it by the ordinance. Further questions from the commission? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Roy, would you help me understand the sentence that says existing nightclubs in the UB, UB2, and B2 districts would continue to be permitted in these districts but would be limited in terms of expansion and cessation of use for more than two years? Um, that that it, seems to me you're carving that out of the general rule. Well, what, what we're doing there is we wanted to make certain that we weren't going to make any existing nightclubs not conforming. So by identifying that as a permitted use in those specific districts, they are not deemed to be non conforming. But there are limitations in terms of the uses in the event they uh, vacate the premises or uh, intend to expand. And that's only because in those three districts they would not be permitted? Well, no, they are permitted. They are actually identified as permitted uses in those districts, well, subject to those two conditions. So they're not deemed to be. If, if, if for example, those three the three districts have specific rules as to right. those two issues. If, if, as an example, the building burned down, that it would not be subject to it. Okay. Thank you. Certainly. Good question. All right. Thank you. Thank problem. you very much. All right, we'll now go to the public hearing on this matter. Are there persons here who would like to speak in favor of item 10? All right, thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to speak? Please respond. Hi, my name is Brian White. I'm here uh, representing the Shaco Partnership. Um, as as this, this is a uh, piece of legislation that provides a, a necessary tool for cities. Uh, and it's similar to ordinances already in place in Virginia Beach and Norfolk, and, and probably others, but I'm specifically aware of Virginia Beach and Norfolk. Um, and as Roy mentioned, the, the Commonwealth uh, places municipalities in, in a very difficult position because state ABC only licenses restaurants and makes no distinction between a small family eatery and a, a large cavernous nightclub that places a, a, a very different kind of stream on city resources, police, emergency vehicles, um, and, and impacts neighborhoods in very different ways. Um, and this, this would allow the city to, to create a, a differentiation between these types of uses so that the city could say uh, this, a, a, a nightclub this type of establishment is appropriate in this type of neighborhood based on, on the city's master planning, but may not be appropriate uh, somewhere else. Um, and, and additionally, a, a lot of times restaurants uh, open with a particular business plan in mind. And we see this a lot in the Shaco area. Uh, and, and they intend to be a, a fine dining or, or close to a type of establishment. But the market may not respond uh, to their business plan the way they had hoped. And it, things begin to deteriorate. And uh, they offer a very different type of establishment than perhaps they had originally um, uh, thought that they were going to and, and by placing proffers in place the city would have an enforcement tool against uh, businesses that uh, changed uh, the, the, the late night um, safety of the neighborhood. Thank you very much. 
Hi, my name is Mike Byrne, and uh, I uh, was in the restaurant business at Chaco Slip for 30 years, and I owned a nightclub for probably the last 15. Um, but the caveat was I had a restaurant. I had a high producing, high volume restaurant at both Rich Brow and the Cap House Grill next door. And my neighbor across the street, Jerry Cable, also has a tobacco company with a nightclub, but he also does $3 million in food business. So the caveat has always been, by, and I work with Brian and I agree with Brian, and we work together, and we actually currently have a group of about 30 business people that are working with ABC and the Department of Public Safety in the governor's office to enforce the laws that are currently already on the books. And if this can help, I think that's great. But the thing that what I'd really like to stress with the city uh, and any of its organizations is to help enforce what's already on the books. You, liquor, beer, and wine, it was separated about 15 years ago, so now you don't have to meet the criteria of all three to be 45-55. Beer and wine is removed from the formula. A nightclub in itself, and believe me, I know, uh, is driven by alcohol, meaning spirits, more so than beer or wine. And so the mixed beverage license has been offered to these groups that wouldn't normally be able to get it because they don't meet the ratio. The cavernous, large nightclubs, which where I had, you know, I could fit 700 people upstairs, but I could also feed, you know, 600 people downstairs. So the idea was to do both and do it well can be good for the neighborhood or the zoning requirements of that neighborhood. Uh, I think it, it bodes very clear right now what's going on on the bottom is that we have people that don't meet the criteria for a restaurant in the ratio of food to beverage and then isolate liquor into that and then put into that the mixed beverage license which has to require that that ratio is met and it currently is not and I could name you 30 establishments right here today if I sat for 10 minutes and tell you who they are so the point is, um, as you go through this process and look at these recommendations, which I support, I'd like you to also make uh, an effort to remind uh, the Department of ABC and Public Safety that these enforcement rules need to be followed as they're already currently on the books. And that's all I got to say. Yeah. Cool. May I ask you a question? It's been years since I had to go to the nitty gritty of the filing of those. Uh, requirements with the ABC board that showed the 45-55. Are they not enforcing that now? It's. Uh, I went and sat and, and did went through the audit process with the ABC board, Curtis Coburn and some other folks. And the issue is that it's you you write it up yourself. There's an MBAR report that you you have to fill out, and when you fill out that MBAR report, you you hand it to the ABC, and that was how you decide, well, I'm going to charge a cover charge and I'm going to put that to my food sales. You know, there's a very, there's a great deal of manipulation going on, particularly in those areas which are clearly, I'll give you an example, there is a club right now in Chaco Slip that's in its second or third generation that just by its sheer structure could never ever meet the requirements. You have 2,000 people that could go in a nightclub and you have a restaurant that seats 40 people. Do the math. It'll never work. So they're being asked to actually uh, hand in their own report. And many of these restaurants are now going, or bars are now being uh, re-audited to find out if they're meeting the criteria for how they're filling out their MBAR reports, whether their food to beverage ratio works, whether there's fraud involved, and whether their mixed beverage license ought to be reduced to a beer and wine license. You take a nightclub and you reduce it to a beer and wine license, you won't have many customers. Now, if you have a music venue and you do beer and wine, you can do that because people are coming there for music, not necessarily for uh, just hanging out and doing what you do in a nightclub at 1 o'clock in the morning. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nice to see you again, Melvin. Nice to see you. You've had a distance since the last time. Yes, right. Uh, hello, I'm David Napier, representing the Chaco Bottom Neighborhood Association. And um, we do acknowledge that bars exist. And uh, even though the state ABC board can't technically do that, ABC 
is a, a for-profit business for the state and they have a lot of needs for that money and that's why it's uh, financially very difficult or impossible for them to enforce their laws. It would be a nice dream if they could get out and catch everybody that wasn't playing by the rules. But uh, this is a, va a valuable tool for the city to give them a hand and get a little bit uh, better behavior out of some people and uh, also to take control over the types of neighborhoods and the, the, the fabric of these different types of neighborhoods. We know in Chaco Bottom that we're gonna have um, a different type of, of allowance than, we, than they have in the fan. Um, and we're, we're excited about good things coming down there. Uh, just don't want too much of a good thing. Anyway, very much support this and if it's a tool that can be in the, the city's box that will help uh, get better and safer neighborhoods and it's a valuable tool. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else would speak in favor? All right. Is there one, anyone here who would like to speak in opposition to this item? Public hearing is now closed. Back to the commission. Commission will be Second. Moved by Mr. Poole, second by Mr. Hutchin. Are there questions on the motion? All in favor, indicate by the usual sign. The motion passes in unanimous. Thank you. All right, next item, Madam Secretary. Uh, the, given the cancellation of the Sunday school meeting in December, there's um, no 30 day papers set for your next agenda, but we do have some location character and extent items, um, but it should be a relatively short short meeting, and it is on a Tuesday. That's all I have. Well, yeah. so there's no reason to be in this time to adjourn. This be is adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would welcome back Mr. Bradley. Yes, indeed. Yeah. 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 I'm so excited. I am so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Back with all my friends. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? You guys have wonderful lives. Yeah. 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 Just come back next month. Come back next month. You'll see some changes.